Wind turbines harness the natural energy from wind and convert it to electricity powering the world. A company owning wind farms tested out upgrades to a few of their turbine blades that are said to improve aerodynamics and in turn improve energy generation and increase revenue. The company wants to know if it really did improve the turbine's performance and by how much to help them decide if they should do the same to all their other turbines. But it's not as simple as getting the difference in generation before and after improvement since the wind speeds in these two periods are completely different. Also, there may be other factors that affected the generation like turbine stoppages or grid curtailment. This project aims to model the power output of wind turbines, isolating its energy generation performance from those factors to quantify any improvements from the blade upgrades. This is the main code of the project file. We also have a separate functions module for reusable functions like for plotting. Let's start by setting up some information like the turbine capacity, the years of data to import, the data granularity, and the start and end dates of the installation activities. These will be important for the calculations later. Next, we load the libraries, then we load the data. Let's have a peek at the data. We can see that it's hard to make sense of the column names. Let's first do some data wrangling. Luckily, we have a data dictionary. Using that as a reference, we choose which columns may be useful. Let's rename them too to make the analysis easier. We have the date time, power register target, wind speed, wind direction, nozzle position or where the head of the turbine is facing, pitch angle or the angle of the place against the wind, ambient temperature, generator temperature, generator RPM, power factor, hydraulic pressure, and availability. We set datetime as the index of our data frame. Then, have a look at the column data types and null count. All columns are numeric. We do have a few null data, but not much. So let's just drop them. Here's the updated data. Next, we'll do some exploratory data analysis. We can see in the summary statistics that there are negative power values, which doesn't seem right. For now, let's just replace them with zeros. The updated summary statistics is looking good. Now, for some univariate analysis, there seems to be a lot of zeros in power. This may be normal since turbines often stop, and there's also low wind season in this location for half a year, or these can also be missing data. Let's move to wind speed for now. There's a nice distribution, but there are also a lot of zeros. Now let's look at availability. The values are mostly at 100% and a few zeros, not much in between. Next, let's do some multivariate analysis. Power versus wind speed has a nice curve, but looks like there are a lot of zero power across a wide range of wind speeds, and a lot more here at zero zero. Power versus availability doesn't seem to have a pattern. There's also the full range of power values at 100% availability, so it looks like availability won't tell us anything after all. Let's just drop the zero power and wind speeds, and drop the availability. Moving on, recall that we want to isolate only the energy generation performance of the turbine from other factors. To do this, we need to detect and remove outliers. In statistics, one method of identifying outliers is those that are outside Q1 minus 1.5 IQR and Q3 plus 1.5 IQR, where Q1 and 3 are the first and third quartiles, and IQR is the inner quartile range or the difference between Q1 and 3. Before we do that, we first split the data to the before and after improvement data sets, since we don't want the differences in performance to influence the outlier detection. One full year before the start of installation should be enough for the before a data set. Then, everything available after installation will be the after data set. Let's look at the power versus wind speed scatter plots again. There's a prominent S-shaped curve. This is called a wind power curve. There are also a lot of outliers. This section is probably grid curtailment. Now we see from wind power curves that power goes from zero to full capacity, so we can't really use the quartiles of power to detect outliers. Instead, we need conditional quantiles, with the condition being the wind speed value. We can solve for this using quantile regression. First, we need to know how the equation of the curve looks like. This S-shape is called a sigmoid function. Now, there are a lot of different sigmoid functions. Through trying out to plot different variants, it looks like the equation that would fit best would be the hyperbolic tangent of wind speed as a fourth degree polynomial with the max power there outside just to scale the magnitude. Next, in quantile regression, we also get a line of best fit like in linear regression, but instead of minimizing the square of errors, we minimize this error function which just basically gives different weights to positive and negative errors based on the quantile. We have defined these functions in our functions module. To get the coefficients a and b, we minimize the error function using scipy optimize. Here are some initial guesses we got from trial and error plotting to have a good starting point. Then, we do this for the 25th and 75th quantiles to get our Q1 and Q3 curves. So now we have our coefficients. Let's create synthetic power curves to visualize. Let's calculate Q1 minus 1.5 IQR and Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Let's also put a plus and minus 1.5% tolerance, which will lead especially for higher wind speeds where there are less actual data points. Here we see our quantile curves. We'll drop everything outside the upper red curve and the lower yellow curve. After doing that, we're left with these data points. Now, it's time for some modeling. First, we split our data to training and test sets by 80 to 20. Then, we initialize lists, which will hold our results later. Let's first do regression using the sigmoid function we used earlier. That was based on a wind power curve, so we only have a wind speed as the feature. No need for feature scaling or selection for now, and we're doing this separate from the others because we're using a custom function here, so we can't use dot fit or dot predict for this. We saw that power versus wind speed is non-linear, so we replace linear regression with this. We'll just fit the 50th quantile or the median. We get the coefficients, evaluate the accuracy, then append to the lists. Next, we try the same function, but minimizing ordinary least squares instead. So this one represents the mean while the previous one was the median. We do the same evaluation. Now we use all the other techniques. We have decision tree, random forest, gradient boost, ada boost, xg boost, cat boost, light gbm, sgd, and artificial neural network. We store all these in a list, then loop through everything. We're still using only wind speed as the feature here. Here are the results plotted as synthetic power curves for visualization. Some are pretty smooth, others have some noise.
some didn't really do well. Next, we'll now try multiple features. First we do standard scaling, then feature selection using select from model. But it gave us only wind speed, which just comes back to our first set of models. This just proves that wind speed is the most significant feature for power, but it's still worth a try to do modeling with multiple features. So we force about 4 features with select k best instead. We'll skip the sigmoid functions since they were designed for power versus wind speed. We go through the same models in a loop but with scaled multiple features. We could have done this in a pipeline, but feature selection takes quite some time and will just be repeated for all models, so it seemed more efficient to just do the feature scale and selection outside a pipeline. And here are the results. We can see that all models did pretty good. We have very high R squared, very low root mean squared errors, though these may be due to the outlier removal, but we did that deliberately for the goal of this project. We can see that there isn't really a big jump between the multi-feature models and the wind speed only models. Still, it's good that we did the multi-feature model since we now proved this. We'll move on with choosing the best model from the wind speed only models. The simplicity outweighs the minimal gains from using a multi-feature model. So the best models for this dataset would be the wind speed only gradient boosting regressor for the before model and the wind speed only light GBM regressor for the after model. We should also check if the RMSE of the before model is close to the after model. We wouldn't want accuracy differences to influence our final comparison later. We got very close numbers, so let's move on with these. Let's just refit these models, then do some out of sample predictions. For the out of sample data, since we imported the entire 2021 but only used the last couple of months for training, we'll use these and use months of data as our out of sample data. Effectively, the turbine is in the before improvement state in this data. Unfortunately, we don't have an out of sample data during the after state because we maximized the limited available data for training. We'll just use the same data for the after model. Model, but we expect the accuracy to be worse to account for the potential improvement in performance. There's still the curve with some outliers. Let's try predicting using the unfiltered data for now, just to simulate new unseen data. Still not too bad, but obviously worse because of the outliers. Again, what we're testing here is the turbine's generation performance. Now we've only effectively removed differences in wind speed. To remove other factors, we need to remove outliers here as well. Since the out-of-sample data is in the before improvement state, we can still use the same outlier removal algorithm we used earlier. After predicting with the clean data, here are the results. Definitely better, but still with the observable errors of the after model, presumably accounting for the improvement. We're not yet done. Forecasting isn't our end goal. What we want to evaluate is the improvement in the turbine's performance. Now that we have our models, what we need is a wind profile representing a typical year so that we can use our models to predict a typical annual energy generation of the turbine. Let's look at the distribution of wind speed in the most recent full years from the data we imported. It should be full years because partial months will skew the distribution. We see the zeros here again, so let's just drop them again. Now we can see the wind distribution, which kind of looks like a Weibull distribution. With that observation, we can now model the wind distribution. We'll use SciPy to fit a Weibull curve to the actual wind distribution. Then, based on the fitted Weibull distribution, we generate random numbers for a year's worth of data points. The synthetic data will now be our representative one-year wind profile. Plotting the distribution of our synthetic data, we get this curve. It's not a perfect match to our actual distribution, but it generally captures it, and the resulting average wind speeds are pretty close. Finally, we plug in the synthetic wind data to our best models and predict a typical annual generation based on their performance alone. We get these figures. This percentage value is pretty much our final answer. But if we want to quantify this improvement in terms of annual energy production, we need to bring back some of the things we removed to make the figures more realistic. Let's take the average availability for the most recent full years. This may not tell us the magnitude of power, but at least this can tell us how many more zero power values should we have due to unavailability. Unfortunately, we can't forecast curtailment since it's largely dependent on the grid, so we'll have to do with availability only for now. Now that we know how many zeros we should have from the availability, let's generate that many random indices and replace the corresponding random power values with zeros. And we get our final figures. 120.2 megawatt hours per year, or 3.69% improvement. Just multiply that energy value with the applicable tariff, then we'll get the increase in revenue. Now this is only for one particular wind turbine with limited available data in the after improvement state. To make a business decision, it might be best to wait a little more for more data, and to do this to all the other tested turbines. And that's it for this project. Thank you very much and have a nice day.